Hey there everybody, God bless you. Welcome to Love Has a Name YouTube channel. My name is Brian and today is Monday, December 11th, 2023. And I'm going to share with you a prophetic word from Prophetess Lana Vassar. Make sure you look in the description to see how you can connect with Lana Vassar's ministry. She's based out of Australia. She has wonderful encounters, wonderful visions, and wonderful prophetic words from the Lord. Amen. So make sure you check it out. Subscribe to her YouTube channel as well. And so as the Holy Spirit leads you. All right. Well, this prophetic word is dated November 19th, 2023. It is entitled, I heard the Lord say, do not accept the false cloaks. I am releasing new mantles. Whoa. This has got me excited. Now, I only read the title prior to recording this video. So I'm going to read the word and get excited with you all as we discover what the Lord is telling us. And already, many of you should already uh, have noticed. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, we engage you, Holy Spirit. Many of you should have already noticed the confirmation already through what the Lord spoke to Prophet Manuel Johnson. Hopefully you saw that video already because that video title that I released last week, so just a couple days ago, was Prophetic Word Events to Come in 2024. All right. And it sh uh, I shared in the video what I transcribed of what the Lord showed Manuel Johnson. One of those things that he showed him was that in 2024, many spiritual generals will be going home to heaven. And with this happening, the mantles that have been on their lives, whomever they will be, will fall upon many. So I know many of you who've watched that channel already, sorry, who watched that video already. I asked you as a prophetic act to say, Lord, I receive my new mantle. So now let's hear Oh, thank you, Lord. My God, my eyes just landed on on a line of text here. And the, the Spirit of God just kind of hit me because there's another confirmation and I haven't even begun to read this. So let's just pray and let's get in. I can't wait to read this. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we engage with you. We engage, Lord, by choosing as an act of our will that is our mind which includes our thoughts that is our emotions which include desire and that includes our will which includes acting upon our thoughts and desire our obedience we choose as an act of our will to engage with you meaning we're thinking about you lord we have the desire in our hearts to hear from you, Lord, to engage with you, to touch you, so that you may manifest yourself, Lord, so that we may know you better and be ever closer and be transformed from glory to glory. Oh, God, we engage with you. Thank you, God, for what you're going to speak to us now. In the mighty name of Jesus, and to you be all the glory. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> joy. Thank you for joy. We are in the realm of joy at this moment. Thank you, Lord. All right. Prophetic word, November 19th, 2023. Lana says, Recently I heard the Lord speaking to many. Do not accept the false cloaks. I am releasing new mantles. Whoa. All right, let's do it. Our first prophetic act in written form in the comments for you to do. Say, I refuse to accept a false cloak. Okay? Uh, cloak is spelled C-L-O-A-K. Okay, that's like a false garment. You could almost say like a false 
um, mental even. All right, but go ahead and, and do that. I, I'm speaking it over myself right now. I do not, Lord, I refuse to accept any false cloak. And I follow it by saying, Lord, I receive my new mantles. What you have for me, Lord, I receive it. Amen. <laughs> and see, we can trust. If we learn to yield to God, and this is one of the very best ways to pray that I've learned, is to just say, Lord, whatever you have planned for me, I say yes, I accept. <laughs> I surrender to it. I yield. I submit myself to it. Oh, my Lord, your life would just go so much easier if you did this from your heart. Oh, my God, Lord. You, you can tell the joy. The joy is flowing. As I'm receiving the joy from the Lord, whether I feel his presence around me, on me, through me, I know that the joy from the Holy Spirit is bubbling up from within me. And it's coming out and it's pouring out to you all like a river, like waves, like vibrations. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what God created. Not the devil. God. <laughs> all right, back to the word. The Lord began to show me, says Lana, that right now the enemy is working hard to lure many into accepting false cloaks that he is trying to put on them. The Lord showed me that these false cloaks were things that did not belong to them. I heard the Lord thundering over these ones. These do not belong to you. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for declaring over us, Lord. We agree with you, Lord. All right. It continues. The Lord was highlighting the importance of the moment that these ones are in right now. That there is a major shift. There's a confirmation. <laughs> that there is a major shift taking place in the spirit over these ones. Who are these ones? That's us. You, all of you, no matter what nation you're in, the words of the Lord are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are truth. And these things, because they are spirit, they are outside of time. They're not bound by time. So all of you are receiving this right now. This is spoken to all of you, no matter where you are and no matter when you're watching. It's yours. Amen. The Lord is lifting off of them the things that have tried to hold them down, and he is giving them new mantles. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord spoke, I am actually delivering you of false cloaks and giving you new mantles. Thank you, Lord. Pay attention, for the enemy is attempting to place these false cloaks upon you. I saw the Lord delivering these ones from the false cloaks of many seasons past, from heaviness, okay? Well, there's an example of a false cloak, okay? From heaviness to comparison, to grief, to despair, to hopelessness, apology, and more. These cloaks were being removed from these ones, and then I saw the battle taking place in the spirit. Ooh, I feel led that if there is anything you specifically feel, a false cloak you've been dealing with, such as what was listed here or maybe something else, as the examples once again were such as a cloak of heaviness, of comparison, comparing yourself to other people, <coughs> grief, despair, hopelessness, apology, etc., or any type of cloak, I feel like as an act, a prophetic act, at the very minimum, speak it out loud. I'm going to give you the example to speak in a moment. But if you want to go the extra mile and you want to type it as well as speak it, praise God, please do so. I encourage that. All right. So for example, let's say you're dealing with a heaviness or a hopelessness, All right? You would say something like this. Lord, I loose this heaviness 
this cloak of heaviness off of me in Jesus' name. Uh, perhaps you want to word it in, in another way. It's, it would still mean the same thing pretty much. You could pretend pretend that this that it's an actual spiritual cloak on you, such as the heaviness. Let's do, let's do hopelessness now. Hopelessness. Prepare, uh, pretend that it's been a cloak. So just imagine it. Take a moment and just say, Lord, I remove. And if you feel like you have to pretend to take off of like, imagine it like a poncho or like, um, or like a coat that's just wrapped around you or whatever, or like a robe. And just pretend to grab it and say, Lord, I loose the cloak of hopelessness. Or if you want to be, you know, dramatic. Remember, we talked about drama in a good way. And you just want to throw it away as a prophetic act. Go ahead. No one's watching. But the Lord is. And so are the demonic spirits. Show them you are choosing to stand with God. Show them that God's word you are receiving as a present reality for you. It is an act of faith to show that you believe what God is saying. And remember what he said, only believe. And in that one town, he could not do many miracles, but heal just a few because of their unbelief. So flip it around. Believe. Have your Faith executed through your prophetic act in action, proving your faith, giving the Lord access to do it for you. All right. That's as simple as I can explain it for you. Okay, let's keep going. Thank you, Lord. The enemy was speaking to these ones. You have not been delivered of these things. They are still heavy upon you and deep within you. You have not been delivered. That's the lie of the enemy. Where in fact, deliverance had happened and was happening. Whoa. Thank you, God. The enemy was fighting hard to cause these ones to keep their eyes upon these things and the weight of these false cloaks. But the Lord was calling these ones to lift their eyes up higher and lift their eyes unto him. Remember Isaiah 26 verse 3? He whose mind, or you could even say eyes, he whose mind, eyes, are fixed on thee. What's the Lord's promise in that scripture? I shall keep in perfect peace he whose eyes or mind are stayed on thee or fixed on thee, focused, attached, connected to, engaged with. Okay, all these different words to help you. One of these words is going to drive it home for you and really kind of quicken you on the inside. And you just have this moment of, ah, that, that's what it means. Well, that is... That is the birth of revelation happening within you. And with that revelation, meaning it's being revealed to you, you are receiving an impartation of understanding. And with the understanding, now you have more faith because you have comprehension. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Thank you, Lord. And now you can act on it with great faith. And the greater faith you now have, now the Lord, haha, the Lord now has more to work with. So now you will see transformation and change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Revelation leads to understanding, leads to increased faith. And if you act on that faith, notice the word is if, because you have to choose as an act of your will. You act on it, and that increased faith that you act with, now the Lord has more room to work with. And change and transformation happens. Oh, this is good, Lord. Thank you. The word continues. 
to see that indeed a mighty deliverance had happened and is happening, these cloaks were but smoke and mirrors to lure them into a space of despair, heaviness, and to hinder momentum. The Lord then spoke again. New mantles. The new mantles I am releasing are coming with a heavier weight of my glory, and the winds of acceleration are coming with these mantles. Oof. To usher in greater momentum of my spirit through these ones. The enemy is attempting to hinder their momentum, but as they align with me and my truth and receive my new mantles, they will not be hindered, momentum stalled, or falsely cloaked. Whoa. Subheader. Comparison is taking many. Sorry, comparison is containing many. I heard the Lord say, many are living in the traps of comparison. I then had a vision and saw many in the body of Christ comparing mantles. And as they were comparing mantles, there was not only a major distraction that they were being lured into, but as I watched, but I watched as cages were being built around them. The scrolls were being dropped on the floor all around them. The Lord then said to me, Comparison is containing many. You must look to me and what I called you to. Oof, can I just pause right there? I love that the Lord is speaking on this because this is something that the Lord has just kind of inwardly taught me. And I've, though I may have not have spoken about this, you know, using this specific word of comparison, in a similar fashion, I have emphasized many times the, the importance of humility and the importance of being led by the Spirit. That means personally following the leading that He wants you to do. For example, I'll give you an example here that's come into mind. Um, over the last couple months, from time to time, the thought comes to me of maybe I should upload my videos to Facebook. I personally don't like Facebook. I do have an account. It doesn't have my image or my even correct info. I purposely did not put my correct info. Um, even the birth date is wrong on there, but I just did that because obviously we know how the enemy uh, likes to spy and so forth. And I prefer to keep hidden in the Lord. Um, and so I do not have the green light to be on Facebook, even though the few times it's come to my mind, I've, I've thought about, you know, a lot, a lot of things. Um, it may gain a lot of traffic or whatnot. It may help bring a lot of new subscribers, views, etc. It may help reach more people, etc. But every time it comes up and I think about it in that moment, the Lord, quickly, the Lord lets me know, no. Or he'll say something like, it's not time. Or stay where you are, something to that effect. And so in this way, Though other people, yes, even wonderful, powerful ministries, even prophets that we follow are on there, on Facebook, I shouldn't compare myself. Because if I'm comparing myself, then one, it's as if saying that I'm not content with obeying the Lord as I am obeying. Now, there's nothing wrong with having, uh, let's say, aspirations or desires to like, oh Lord, I could do more for you here. Even if the intent of our heart and motive is pure, if it is not God's will, then honestly, why do we want to, to follow such a road, such an avenue? Amen? Why add more to our plate and possibly even unnecessary spiritual warfare? <laughs> <coughs> and so... I choose not to compare myself. Now, I will look up to people and I'll say like, wow, they're, that's amazing. Like, you know, there are people who who I know that are not like well, well established in terms of the maybe the church world, but the Lord speaks to them in prophetic ways, etc. And they have like 600,000 followers and, you know, subscribers and all this stuff. And that's great. And I see it. I'm just, hmm. I have moments where I'm like, man, that's awesome. 
but I don't compare myself in the sense of be, uh, of allowing myself to get in the flesh. Because if I do, then I would be ensnared by the enemy. I have to be content in knowing that I'm obeying the Lord or He wants me, what He has me doing. That myself should be enough. And that, for you, should be enough. If the Lord wants you to do more or whatnot and you follow that, then you can rejoice and you can um, abide in that joy that you're obeying him. But there's no need to compare yourself because there are people who will have callings that are not like yours. There are people who will have callings that are smaller, that are similar, that may be similar and then the Lord adds more, or that may be you know, larger and bigger, but it doesn't matter because it's not about us, right? The heart of a true believer only wants to obey the Lord. And, you know, you, you may work at a bagel bakery, and that's the ministry God has for you. That should be enough. And if the Lord wants you to do more, he'll not only show you and reveal it, he'll put the desire in you, and you'll have peace and he'll open doors. Amen? So, anyway, I hope that helped. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's finish up. Comparison. The Lord said to me, Comparison is containing many. You must look to me in what I have called you to. I am delivering my people deeply from the orphan spirit in the cages of comparison and competition. I am bringing deep healing. I am bringing fire upon comparison in a stronger way than many have felt before. Wow. He then began to speak over those who were in comparison. It's time to come up higher. It's time to stop having conversations with comparison and come and have conversation with your Creator. <laughs> That's the perfect answer. Amen. Be confident in knowing how, how you are already accepted by God. You have already been accepted into the beloved. He has imputed righteousness into you. Nothing you did caused you to deserve it. But he now has made you worthy. And if he, the creator of all, is pleased with you and embraces you, and loves you fully, and is absolutely, uh, to use a worldly term, head over heels in love with you, then why compare yourself with another? Isn't God's approval and his love enough? Yes. And so you're confident in who you know, who, in who you are, because you've learned your identity because of who you know that you belong to Jesus. All right? Okay, let's continue. There has been an elevation of the conversation of comparison over conversation with the Creator. Draw close to me and repent for exalting conversations with comparison. Let me embrace you. Let the fire of my love refine, purify, heal, deliver, and bring healing to you. I am bringing swift and strong alignment, for it is time to arise in your sonship like never before, your true identity in me, and pick up your scroll again. Ooh, okay, I, I'm now fe feeling led that if you feel, if you feel for whatever reason and you're comfortable and you'd like to do another prophetic act, then if this applies to you, Type in the comments, Lord, I am picking up my scroll again. All right? And scroll is spelled S-C-R-O-L-L. -L. All right. Immediately I knew, says Lana, these scrolls that had been dropped were assignments the Lord had given these ones in this season. And distraction had taken root to lure them away from fulfilling that which God had called them to. 
There was absolutely no condemnation. That's Romans 8, verse 1. Okay? All I could, all I could do was feel the love of the Father and His hand bringing strong alignment, healing, and a call to ferocious focus. Whoa. Ferocious focus in this hour. There was a call to embrace the fire in a deeper way and a call to position themselves for the receiving of restoration, repositioning to fulfill the assignments he had given them, and also the receiving of the new mantles. There was deliverance, healing, alignment, and restoration happening all at once. I could feel so strongly the heart of the Lord, positioning these ones to build with him in greater ways than they had ever built with him before, and, bring, and being drawn into a deeper place of intimacy with him and focus upon him. I heard his voice again. Oof. This deep purifying and alignment must take place right now for them to walk in all that I have for them in this new season. Whoa. Wow. The final subheader. Dive deep into discernment. I heard the Lord speaking to these ones. Dive deep into discernment. Do not take everything at face value. Draw close to me and let me show you what is truly taking place. Again, I could hear the words, do not accept false cloaks. He continues speaking. There is much taking place in the spirit around you, my precious ones, where the enemy is trying to load you up with much that is not yours. Whoa. There is also my hand bringing alignment and you will find the answers you need, the clarity to be received as you Ask me. And the final section here. Oof, I love this word he's going to mention. It's time for ascension. I have much to show you. I have much to reveal to you. Cast off distraction. Ask me to show you the false cloaks. Ask me to show you what is yours to carry. Ask me to show you what to pick up. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. You will be surprised how much smoke and mirrors has been surrounding you. I am thundering over you. Come up higher. Come up higher. And as my voice thunders over you, deliverance is happening. Clarity is being concreted hmm. and the greatest alignment of your life is happening right now in the release of these new mantles come up come up come up it is time to ascend Whew. wow God thank you Thank you for this word, Lord. Oh, Lord, yes. And I know the areas of this word that spoke to me, Lord. And I thank you. I thank you, Father, for your people who are receiving this word as well. Taking to heart what you have spoken because you're wanting the best for us. But we must agree, align, and partner with your will if we want to partake of the best you have for us. Grant us the will, the desire. Place it in us, O oh God, just as you said in Philippians 2.13. Grant us the desire and the power and strength to do what pleases you. We are willing. In Jesus' name, amen. Whoa, 
Thank you, Lord. This was a great word. My God. Let me know if there's something specifically that spoke to you. It would be great to hear. Amen. Don't forget, once again, check out Lana Vosser's ministry. That way, on your own, if the Lord is leading you to engage more with her ministry and teaching materials, etc., praise the Lord. This is why I always honor the prophets, and I speak this because just like I've discovered people online that have ministered to me that I may never met, some who've already gone to heaven long ago, but they're ministering to me. This is why I also ask that you let the Holy Spirit lead you. Because perhaps the ministry of Lana Vassar, as an example, will be extremely important in your spiritual growth. I don't know that for sure, but God does. So if there is something in you that just resonates with how God uses her and speaks to her, then I praise God that I could be used in this way. But now you take it and run with it. Amen? So the same goes for anyone else that I present here or talk about. Praise God. All right. Well, God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the like for me. I always forget to say share, but please do share. Um, it is always wonderful to see at the end of the month to see how many of you have really, really shared. It does help. And some of you do share so, uh, on Facebook, which is completely fine because that's you doing it. That's not me doing it <laughs> on Facebook or TikTok or WhatsApp um, or any other places. That is just awesome. And I really appreciate it. And the reason is because, oh, because the presence of God, because the spirit of understanding, because impartation of his presence and peace and rest and things that are on my life can flow through and touch you. And you in turn thank the Lord by sharing it so that others, others also can hopefully be touched. Amen. So that's it for now. God bless you. Stay tuned for more awesome content. And um, soon I will be sharing maybe some not prophetic words, but some prophetic encounters. Like this morning, I had a prophetic encounter. It was awesome. It was the fourth time that I faced death. <laughs> and won. Praise the Lord. <laughs> what, I mean, what do I mean by dream encounter? It means I was sleeping. But my spirit was somewhere else. So somewhere else, is to the best of my knowledge, from my understanding of this encounter, something was happening. But God used me, and I was uh, the person thought I was really there, but it was my spirit. <laughs> and they thought they could kill me. <laughs> and you'll just have to wait to see till I release it. Let me know if you want to hear of that encounter, and I'll, I'll release it in a separate video. Um, and all the glory goes to God, of course. So God can use you, and he probably is already, but we have to learn about what he can do and awareness of it so that we can uh, engage with the Lord and, and ask for him to do it with us. Amen? <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. See you later in the next video. Bye-bye.